So we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of meditation together. I'm going to do a guided meditation that will orient us towards qualities of the absolute. And hopefully will be available to you in this meditation. So start with a couple of deep belly breaths. Deeply relaxing into your seat of meditation. Putting down all the thoughts and considerations that have you anywhere but here. Feel your feet on the ground, your contact with the floor. Feel the support of the building you're in, holding you in this moment. Notice if you can sense our Mother Earth beneath, holding each of us in this moment, offering us food and nourishment, even this very breath that we're taking right now is a gift from our Mother Earth. Start by bringing awareness to the belly or focusing on it's called the hara, hara, which is a chakra. It's about two finger widths below the navel and two or three finger widths in from the surface of the skin. When we make contact, we can feel a kind of seatedness, an inner groundedness. So breathe into your belly, relaxing into the hara, finding that grounded seat within. We're gonna be doing what I call the I am not practice. And this you'll do with your mics off. You'll just repeat after me. I am not this appearance. I am not this body. I am not these thoughts. I am not this life history. I am not these behaviors. I am not these emotions. I am not these memories. I am not this identity. I am not anything. So again, breathing into the hara, just below the belly button. Feel that inner seat, the inner groundedness. You can relax and let go of doing. On the next in-breath, invite awareness into the heart area. We're wanting to make contact with whatever heart quality is here for you in this moment. It could be a tenderness, a light buoyancy, a warm love. Deep acceptance, perhaps a willingness to surrender. A 
while resting in your heart area. Recall the people in your life who you love. And recall the people who love you. Recall the people that deeply care about you. Recall those you deeply care about. Your meditation tonight, your practice is being done for these people too. Feel the warmth of that, the connectivity. The sense of willingness. To let your practice benefit these people. On the next in breath, invite awareness to the center of your forehead. In Theravada Buddhism, this area is called the Wisdom Eye. It's a location of inner knowing, intuitive intelligence, and inner perception. And in the Zen tradition, it's called the Dharma Eye. You may feel a kind of tingling in the center of your forehead. Some kind of an energy activity. Or perhaps nothing at all. Any of these are just fine. On the next in breath, invite awareness to the top of your head. What's called the crown chakra in the chakra system. This is a portal, a gateway. When we journey to other realms and other universes, this is the portal that's used. If you can, breathe into the crown chakra, just feeling that sense of slight pressure, kind of energy swirl, or maybe nothing at all. Any of these are just fine. Those of you who have the capacity of inner sight may be noticing a rich blackness in our field, a vast, boundless, borderless blackness. The blackest black you've ever seen. and smooth. If you ran your fingers across this blackness, it would feel smooth like black velvet. And there's a luminosity to the blackness, a radiance, a sparkle. A 
Let your awareness open more fully into the blackness. into the smooth, inky, luminous blackness, the vastness, let awareness reach in all directions into this luminous blackness. Noticing you can't find an end. It goes on forever without limit. Notice the smoothness, the stillness that's here. the peacefulness, anything the peacefulness touches becomes peaceful. Notice how part of you is quieting down, relaxing maybe even surrendering, all doing, to just be here, right now. Let go of any ideas, let go of any sense of a me. Just be aware in this growing peacefulness, this pristine stillness. You may feel my words arising from the stillness and returning to stillness. Let yourself drift a little deeper into the peacefulness and stillness. Feeling its soothing qualities, that deep sense of ease. The perception that nothing needs to be done. It's just right in this moment. Relax a little more deeply, letting go of anything that's ready. Being willing not to know exactly what this is. Let your awareness be drawn a little more deeply into the luminous blackness of peacefulness and stillness. Open a little more fully being willing to receive.
We'll sit in silence together for about 15 minutes, and then I'll ring the bell.
I would like to open it, uh, it up for comments on the meditation or any questions that you might have that you'd like to ask. Stephen, a question came in at 623. Um, how does no self relate to self-esteem, having self-worth, knowing who we are? Seems like we need to know, find out who we are before we can actually, uh, before we learn what no self actually means. Otherwise, don't we develop into insecure no self people? This doesn't make sense to me. No, you're you're viewing it as the self being on the same plane, being the a conceptual structuring that no self is conceptual as self is. And it's not like that. The love and the presence quality and function of the absolute are what support us with intimacy and warm heartedness, but it's coming from a natural place rather than from an idea that I must be this way uh, or some kind of compulsion. But it is true, there has to be a well-defined self before we can work with the self and begin to drop some of the patterns, some of the historical beliefs and convictions about who we are to be willing to enter into and recognize ourselves as the mystery. Is it Elaine? Please correct me. Yes, if I'm thank saying you. Right. It's Elaine. Yes, thank you for letting me ask a second question. Um, so while you're doing the meditation, and um, the instruction is is to um, feel or, or get in touch with certain places of chakras, and maybe feel a tingling, or maybe feel something, or um, approach this. Um, luminous blackness and i kept thinking here here's this idea of no self and yet who is it that would be experiencing these things right. because they are experiences maybe who who isn't who or what i guess so there is a, there is an experiencer is, is that mm -hmm. yeah the absolute is the absolute is experiencing itself S Okay, so it's not, it's not, it's no, not, not any self that is actually experiencing it. It is the absolute experiencing. Well, there could be a self at the start. It would still be concept would be functioning and we'd be relating to it from concept. This reminds me of this. I've heard about or read about this. So it can be, have that quality to it. But as we go deeper into the peacefulness and stillness, then that sense of self, any any sense of me falls away, as eventually does thought. Thought stops. So who are you if you don't have thought? Mm. The experiencer is the abs absolute experiencing itself. Mm -hmm. Presenting as Elaine. Mm. That's a lot to sit with. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Frank? It's actually this one, Lois. So um, Lois, okay. That was that was deeply, deeply, deeply peaceful. Um sometimes I wondered if I was sleeping, but except that I I wasn't out of it. Were you I mean, dreaming? Meaning, were you seeing, you know, the kinds of pictures we see when we dream? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, that, that I, suggests that suggests that you weren't sleeping. Yeah. I, I, at times refocused on my, somewhere in my head, as you recommended we do earlier. Um, but other than that, it, it was so, 
so peaceful and free. Yeah. So I, I don't know, I guess, well, you, you just said, my question was, was I sleeping without knowing it? But you just said I wasn't. No, and, and the, if sleep was involved, then there would be other components coming into it. And if you're getting deeper and deeper in contact with the peacefulness and, and the fascinating thing with the, the absence function of the absolute is the deeper we go, the more refined and more subtle it gets. And one of the secrets of Buddhism is that whatever is the most refined and most subtle is also the most potent. So we're mm. getting deeper into the peacefulness. It's getting more potent. That's why you're feeling it more fully. And, mm. and part of the function after the meditation is to stay with the openness to not return quickly to the sense of self, to let the openness and freedom be here. Mm -hmm. Well, that was that was really wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm really glad to hear the report. Nice to see you both again. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Thank Hi. you so much for a beautiful meditation and leading to a really beautiful place within and around all of us. Um, I'm wondering um, if a person was interested in uh, becoming a student and be receiving instruction, how mm -hmm. we might reach you. Yeah, uh, my website, awakeningdharma.org is the best way. It lists all the activities I'm doing. I do about three or four residential retreats, in-person retreats a year, and I do a number of things online. And next year, I'm going to be going uh, uh, fairly exclusively and then exclusively to self-organized retreats. I'll be doing a two-week retreat. I live in Michigan, so I'll be doing a two-hour retreat. I rented a lake house, and that'll be doing uh, a practice that's traditional called the four elements, earth, water, fire, and wind, recognizing those qualities in ourselves. And then the second week, we'll be focusing on awakening and the absolute. And then in October, I'll be doing a three-week ret retreat in Utah, uh, near St. George, Utah, near Zion National Park. And that'll be focusing exclusively on awakening for three weeks. So that should be quite uh, spectacular. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Jenny. Oh, Jenny is what? Nadine. Nadine, yeah. Um, hi, that was a very beautiful experience. And the black of your robe actually was a good visual cue for me to, um, to, to f for that feeling. But I'm still lingering on how you, you know, bring this into the world. And so far, the, the only way that I can conceptualize being a person in the world with no self is, is, is almost like doing what you do, but but without ego. But is that really the same thing? Yeah, yeah. The the, the ego. Someone mentioned ego death earlier, uh, and and that's a, a later development uh, in my book, demystifying awakening. I identify three uh, specific kinds of awakening, and there's the kensha, which is the first opening of of recognizing ourselves as the absolute there would still be a personality operating after that experience. Sometimes we'd be in personality, sometimes we'd be in the, in the vastness, whether it's the black vastness of absence or the white. That's why we have the black and white robes in Zen. The white symbolizes the manifest, the love and the presence qualities of the absolute. And, and that's, what, that's how we're engaging is through the love and presence. But it's all the core is all absence. It's all that vastness of what feels to be empty, but also feels like there's a kind of fullness to it too. It's a paradox. But we can fully function and function more easily, more freely, have more contact with others, uh, deeper, more intimate contact with others when we're not in the way having to put the self up that I need you to relate to and affirm for me. Thank you. 
All so right. I'm okay. So I was I was also just thinking about you know the things people love to do. You know, mm -hmm. if it's a sport or reading or just you know something that gives you joy and right. but you still hang on to that right i mean you yeah you can still enjoy your friends you can enjoy a walk in nature anything anything that's going to be wholesome is going to be something you'll enjoy the things that are unwholesome will be less attractive and we gravitate away from those so it's a it's a self reinforcing system but it's a it's a whole process. And then again, there's I mentioned there's other levels of awakening. There's the what's called Satori in, in my teaching. That's where uh, the personality really gets dislodged. It's still functioning, but the absolute is really functioning more and more in that consciousness. And then finally, the the what's called the last or final enlightenment in Zen is called Daigo Teite, and that's where the sense of self uh, drops and never never reasserts itself and the it's the absolute functioning uh, in that appearance as an individual there's no there's no me there thank you you're welcome joe yes uh, thank you very much for that uh, talk and meditation stephen um, i um I think uh, I've been practicing myself with uh, jhana practices, you know, trying to uh, let go of um, all concepts okay. and um, and infinite uh, space. Mm -hmm. And I got a taste of uh, of that uh, during the the quiet meditation that we had. But I was wondering when we um, get that sense of uh, the absolute, not even the sense of the absolute, when we are in the absolute, mm -hmm. and then we return to personality, is that with an awareness of, uh, or a taste of something so vast that keeps, uh, keeps uh, the practice um, spiraling towards a greater and greater sense of transcendence or mm. is there a cessation when we just drop off everything yeah it absolutely works that way that as we have contact and part of it is it's important to recognize like in the meditation tonight if you made contact and you experience the vastness that deep profound peacefulness the that stillness, the unparalleled stillness, if you experience those, then you can let those land as a reality that you know is true. You don't need to take my word for it that these exist. So it builds our trust, and that in turn lets us soften our allegiance to the sense of self, to the personality material. And so that gets easier for us to work with because we're less and less identified with that as being the core of who we are. The core is the absolute. I mean, really all of it's the absolute, but we begin to feel it as a kind of core, particularly within the horror, the heart, the, the um, wisdom eye, we can feel all those contact points. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Stephen, let me ask a, a question that came in on the chat there that sure. several people have uh, referred to. This comes from Mary Lynn. She asks uh, the question, definition of tabula rasa, the human mind, especially at birth, viewed as having no innate ideas. Does this come close to the absolute or the no self? Yeah, that's a good question. The, the model I like best in the structuring and individuation of the self is when we're born, this is from Margaret Mahler, when we're born, we're born into what's referred to as a dual unity. So it's a unity in that there's an undividedness in the infant. The infant does not understand that it is a separate entity. It thinks it's part of this undivided wholeness, the, the quality of presence of the absolute. And over time, the baby begins to realize, I really need these caregivers and parents, the 
hunger's on the inside, food's on the outside. And that begins to give us a sense of self based on the body itself. And that's where ideas and concepts begin to evolve. But the baby isn't actually awake because for us as adults, we come from an established sense of self. We effectively let go of that. We might say transcend it even temporarily by being immersed in the absolute. And over time that becomes our, uh, a base for us. And I, uh, a place of per perspective of perception. And the more contact we have, the more that lands until we do awaken to that. And that's part of the experience of awakening is recognizing the absolute is me. And then Janet. Hello. Hi. I'm, my mind has so many ideas in it that have been provoked by this evening's talk. And I'm grateful for that. So I want to thank you. But um, I guess when I first raised my hand, it was to talk about the fact that now that I am a retiree and I have the freedom and opportunity because I am financially stable mm -hmm. and I have a computer in my home that I can sit and indulge myself with all this learning and self-exploration that I am just so grateful to have these opportunities, but there are so many that could benefit mm -hmm. and i mean most of my life was doing what i needed to do or what i was taught or thought i needed to do in order to you know go to school get a job get married have kids you know be a human being on this planet in this culture. <clears throat> and now I feel like I'm given the opportunity to find my true self because I'm not just that human being on this planet in this culture. Right. I am, I am mm -hmm. consciousness. Well, I would, I would stop with I am. Yes. Well, I put that in the chat. Okay. I am. Yeah. And one of my first teachers taught me, and I put it in quotes in the chat. She told me, I am has sent me to you. Mm -hmm. See, and I would, I would add, so did I am not. Got it. It's all. All yep. that is and all that is not. Yep. It's, it's all. everything and it's nothing. Yeah. At the same time. Thank you. You're welcome. So what, one last thing to share, if you wish, I've got a YouTube channel. If you want to subscribe to that, it's under my name. There are a lot of videos up there of me leading meditations, giving talks on various things. Um, I do longer guided meditations that are 45 minutes to an hour, going deeper into the absolute and different qualities. And then also I'm on Instagram. Uh, so there's postings that, regularly. But, so but I'd love to get your, your website. Sure, awakeningdharma.org. Okay. 